the US Delta Force and the British MI6 are just a couple of examples of modern-day elite soldiers. But what are the ancient equivalents of these elite soldiers? Today we're going to find out. Join me as we take a look at 15 of the most powerful ancient units. Number 15. Order of Assassins All right, let's kick off the list with a fan favorite, the Order of Assassins. Whether you've played one in a video game or worked in the shadows in your favorite D&D campaign, everyone knows what an assassin is, but their roots go back much further than most would think. The Order of Assassins was a mysterious sect of Islam living in the mountains of Persia and Syria between 1095 and 1275, where they carried out various acts of subterfuge and murdered both Muslim and Christian leaders alike, posed a threat to the state. They were the first to carry out such acts, and the modern term assassination as we know it stems from the ancient order's tactics. They followed a leader simply known as the Old Man of the Mountain and wreaked havoc all while flying under the radar for nearly 200 years. They mostly existed in rumors spread by the Crusaders who would return home with all sorts of horrifying stories about the Order of Assassins. It was said that all these men knew were war and murder and were recruited and heavily indoctrinated as children in the ways of stealth and deceit. The word assassin spread fear all throughout Europe, and the name alone became synonymous with murder. Even Marco Polo himself told tales of the elite fighters and made the claim that they were so devoted to their cause and their leader that they would kill themselves for either one without a moment's hesitation. Number 14. Sacred Band of Thebes They say that there is no honor amongst thieves, but there is certainly honor amongst Thebes. Formed in 378 BC, the Sacred Band of Thebes were Greece's elite fighting units, led by General Gorgidas. This small army became legendary in its own time, always with 300 members and always made of 150 male couples. Each couple consisted of older and younger men, both lovers, which would invoke the favor of Eros, Greek god of love. But these men weren't just lovers, they were fighters too, and this invitation-only group sought out the strongest, bravest, and best warriors Greece had to offer. But the bond of these men ran deep, and love only made them stronger, because if you love the one next to you on the battlefield, you'll fight even harder in the hopes that they can come home safely. It made their many victories in battle far more personal. And speaking of victories, the Sacred Band of Thebes was so powerful, they absolutely demolished the Spartan armies and were sometimes sent to the front ranks of the regular army's phalanxes, because their presence alone was enough to inspire the average soldier. Sacred Band of Thebes was so profound that even Plato wrote about them. Sadly though, this band of both lovers and fighters was wiped out 40 years after its inception by the Macedonians in the Battle of Chaeronea. I suppose all is fair in love and war. Number 13. The Medjai The ancient Egyptian empire was vast, brilliant, and mysterious, and so it would make sense that the pharaohs of old would employ their best and brightest to keep it safe. So while they had both invading armies and domestic forces, some patrolled the outermost fringes of the empire, stopping enemy invaders before the pharaoh even knew about it. I am, of course, talking about the Medjai. These guys were like the U.S. Army Rangers of old, patrolling the barren wastelands of the realm. And while living on the outskirts may not be the first job you apply for, being part of the Medjai was one of the highest honors bestowed upon an Egyptian fighter. This fighting force was VIP only, and membership was often extended to the best soldiers in the entire military, meaning competition was tough. But their role didn't stop as protectors of the outskirts. The Medjai served as the royal family's paramilitary force that guarded them, not only in life, but stood watch at the royal tombs and palaces, dispatching any would-be grave robbers with the perfect blend of violence and grace. These guys knew the Nubian desert better than anyone and had no problems using it against their enemies. Number 12. The Immortals The next entry on this list may be a bit more familiar to some, as this force appeared in one of the coolest movies of 2006. The Persian Immortals served under Emperor Cyrus the Great in the 6th century BC and were his greatest and most dependable warriors. These fighters were different from the normal Persian army, because while the bulk of the army was made of drafted men called upon during times of war, the Immortals were a permanent force of 10,000 men who only knew war. 
The Immortals were a massive, heavy infantry unit, with each man outfitted with dark robes to conceal their scale armor. Each member was highly trained in the ways of the bow, short sword, and spear, making them deadly at every range and in every situation. And to keep an elite fighting force strong on the battlefield, the Immortals were given only the best rations, if you could even call them that. Instead of subsisting on a few grains and dried meats, they literally feasted in their tents on the finest foods during the campaigns and were even given gold jewelry to keep spirits high. While their methods were brutal, they were treated as gentry through and through. They were renowned by their people and feared by foreigners, but their reputation wasn't enough to save them in 480 BC, during the Battle of Thermopylae, when they fell to King Leonidas and his small Greek force over the course of three days. Number 11. The Companion Cavalry Alexander the Great was, well, great, and known for building one of the largest and most impressive empires the world had ever seen. But you can't do something like that on your own, no way. And sometimes you're only as strong as your companions, which is why Alexander the Great had his companion cavalry with him every step of the way. The companion cavalry was composed almost exclusively of Macedonian nobility who were born and bred for battle. And while they were some of the best fighters in the world, they were able to conquer other armies so well because of their wedge formation. What's the wedge formation? Well, think of it as the Mighty Ducks Flying V. The cavalry would deploy themselves in a triangular shape with the tip leading the way. This formation offered a narrow point for breaking through enemy formations and concentrated the leaders to the front and was much easier to control when they needed to move. Plus, the companions were the first to use this formation, and you'll see it employed by armies and police forces all over the world. The companions were known for their shock and awe style of assaults and would seemingly come out of nowhere when an enemy left their flanks and phalanxes undefended. A surprise attack from these military forces would level not only the playing field but entire armies and send them scattering fast. The companions were made up of 2,600 men at a time and they were of course awarded with the very best weaponry, armor, and horses which helped make them one of the best fighting units of any era. Number 10. Extraordinary Fighters Formed during the Latin War of the 4th century BC, the fighting force simply known as the Extraordinari were some of the finest fighters Greece had to offer. The Extraordinari were formed from Italy's tribes and were composed of 1,600 spearmen and 600 cavalrymen. These men were on the front lines, screening the Greek legion's flanks while the army marched forward into battle. If you wanted to get through to the conscripted army, you had to get through 1,600 long and sharp spears. Yeah, good luck with that. The Extraordinary were also known for fighting in skirmishes, clearing the way for the heavier units to make their way forward and let the army dispatch the stragglers on the battlefield, and were even charged with guarding commanders on the battlefield. And while the Extraordinary were trained by Rome's top commanders, many of them were originally barbarians, and so when they tasted the enemy's blood on the field, their barbaric instincts and brutality mixed with their Roman training. But how do you get barbarians to fight for the Eternal City, especially when the last thing they care about is Roman political intrigue? Money. Money talks, even in ancient times, and so the prospect of coin and glory of battle was enough to keep the extraordinary happy while swinging their swords and jabbing their spears for someone else's cause. Number 9. Berserkers We've all heard the expression going berserk, and while we may not think of it much today, the next entry on this list may change that for you. Everybody loves Vikings, and they seem to be having a well-earned resurgence within pop culture. But the Vikings of old weren't as glamorous as their television counterparts, pillaging and plundering wherever they went. And any time the medieval Europeans encountered them in the battlefield, they were left shaking in their boots. But even the Norse Vikings had some top-tier fighters known as the Berserkers. Composed of Danes, the Berserkers were fanatical warriors that would wear the pelts of bears and wolves they skinned themselves and went into drug-induced trances before doing battle. They screamed and howled as they cut their way through anyone they deemed their enemy and always did so without armor. So, if they're willing to go into battle unafraid of what will happen to them, just imagine what they're willing to do to you. 
and if they lost their weapons somehow, no problem, because the Berserker would tap into their animal instincts to bite, claw, rip, and tear into enemy flesh. Viking Berserkers didn't care about living or dying, and all that mattered to them was channeling their animal spirits and dining forever in the halls of Valhalla in preparation to aid Odin and the Ragnarok, and dying in battle only meant getting there sooner. Number 8. Tagma the Byzantine Empire was enormous, encompassing modern-day Italy, Greece, and Turkey, as well as much of northern Africa and the Middle East, so their army was about as diverse as they came. Soldiers were conscripted from far and wide, often imbuing aspects of their diverse cultures into their armor, weapons, techniques, and strategy. But in the 4th century BC, Emperor Constantine V created his own elite army corps, local to the capital, and he called it the Tagma. The Tagma were professional fighters who lived, breathed, and ate battle, and were paid handsomely. The better you fight, the better the wages were, so they had every incentive to train harder. Historians tend to disagree on the size of the Tagma, with some saying that it was made of 20,000 men and others saying it was just four to 500, but it's likely that the Tagma was made of 1,000 loyal units that were known for putting down revolts in the capital and keeping the emperor in power for as long as possible. The Tagma were exclusively heavy cavalry units, making them as strong as they were mobile, and they were maintained on a permanent basis. The Tagma were more concerned with defending Constantine and the capital, so they rarely deployed into battle, but if you did see one, the chances are it was a bad sign for you. Number 7. The Varangian Guard the next group of tough-as-nails ancient units sounds like they're from the Star Wars universe, but they're 100% real. Even to this day, governments employ mercenaries, which are often called freelancers, to get their hands dirty and do the things that their army couldn't. So when Basil II of the 10th century Byzantine Empire needed his own army, he looked to some Nordic warriors of Scandinavia and formed the Varangian Guard. These axe-wielding Nords served as Basil's personal guard, but their duties extended far beyond the walls of his royal palace. So while there were men guarding him at the capital, he sent plenty of Varangian guards to the battlefield to fight in the reserve of his campaigns, only to be released at the turn of the tide. A big enemy of the Byzantine Empire was none other than Constantinople, and the Varangian guard was known for hewing legions of Constantine's men over the years. And the best part of being a sword for hire is the coin. Basil's Varangian guard was paid handsomely for their efforts and loyalty, and as an added perk, they were rewarded with plenty of gold and riches at the end of the workday. When word of the Varangian guard spread to the rest of the Northmen, people were lining up to enter their ranks. Number 6. Keshig You can't talk about fierce warriors of old without talking about Genghis Khan. He was as fierce as he was powerful and conquered most of the known world at the time, but you can't pull off something like that without a little help. Enter the Kashig. Roughly translating to blessed or favored, the Kashig serves as the imperial guard for the Mongolian royalty. Each individual was chosen personally by Khan himself for their strength and loyalty and worked around the clock to keep the man and his harem safe. Because when you're someone like Genghis Khan, you're sure to earn yourself plenty of enemies during your bloody exploits. The Kashig always consisted of 1,000 men and were split into two squads, the Torgud and the Kevtul, who watched over him during the day and night shifts, respectively. When it was first formed, the Kashig had a strict Mongols-only policy, but once the Mongolian warlord died in the year 1227, they opened up the doors to anyone of noble birth around Eastern Europe and Asia. And while Genghis Khan was the royal guard's most notable boss, the Kashig served the empire for generations. Number 5. Ninja Finally, we're talking about ninjas, everyone's favorite fighters. The ninja have gone on to become one of the most popular ancient units in history, and even one of the most popular Halloween costumes. The legendary ninja of feudal Japan were known in their own time as shinobi, and they carried out every covert operation you can think of. So they didn't just serve as knife-wielding, shuriken-throwing assassins, although they were pretty good at that too. The shinobi were masters of camouflage, infiltrations, and sabotage. If you were serving in a noble's court, you could have been standing side by side with one of these masters of disguise for years without knowing it. 
and they even infiltrated the likes of monks, anything to earn their pay. But the shinobi really made their claim to fame during 15th century Japan, when the country had yet to be unified under one daimyo, and the states were at constant war with each other. And the thing about the shinobi was that they were loyal only to themselves, meaning they were more than happy to do anyone's dirty work, as long as the price was right. But where the shinobi really excelled was with their guerrilla-style hit-and-run tactics. So if you were hit with something like a well-placed poison dart, by the time you even realized what was happening, these guys were already gone. Number 4. Aztec Jaguar The Nordic Berserkers weren't the only warriors to do battle in animal skins. The Aztec Jaguars were quite literally the greatest soldiers of the Mesoamerican Aztec Empire during the 15th century. Meaning, even though they were on the other side of the world, the Aztec Jaguars existed at the same time as the Shinobi. That's pretty cool. But being an Aztec Jaguar was tough, and the best way to earn the favor of not just the Emperor, but the gods themselves, was to bring back as many captives as you could from war and sacrifice them. And these sacrifices of the Aztec Empire were incredibly brutal, involving the removal of the still-beating heart of the victim and a quick severing of the head from the body. They traversed through the jungles wearing their jaguar skin, meaning they were able to be the most fearsome predator in the jungle. So just imagine how easy it was to cut down enemy ranks. The jaguars had an array of weapons to choose from, like daggers, bows, and their incredibly unique swords made from hard and sharp obsidian that resemble a modern-day chainsaw. Needless to say, these guys were tough. And to make the job even sweeter, they were paid a handsome salary and their own personal temples to pray in. Not only were they the top dogs of the Aztec army, but the Jaguars served as local police too. So just imagine getting pulled over by that cop. Number 3. Shaolin Monks Up from the 36 Chambers If you've ever listened to the Wu-Tang Clan or watched literally any Kung Fu movie, then you'll know all about the Shaolin Monks. Or would you? Because despite their peaceful demeanor, there was a moment in time when the Shaolin monks fought against enemy invaders with great efficiency. The Shaolin monks of China thrived during the Sui dynasty and fought in their fair share of scraps, mainly against the Japanese invaders. But don't think that these followers of Buddhism entered the fray with just their fists as weapons. They may have had some pretty cool moves of their own, but they had no problem going in for the kill with simple weapons like daggers and cudgels, or something a little bit more martial like spears, broadswords, and the one-of-a-kind tiger hooks that really only they knew how to use. These guys were awesome, and it's no wonder they've inspired so many movies and television shows. Nowadays, though, you may not see Shaolin monks wielding bloody spears in battle, but many of them still stick to their rigorous training regimes that allow them to bend over backwards, perform lightning-fast kicks, and wear something they like to call the Iron Shirt. Number 2. The Janissaries The Janissaries may not be history's most famous fighting units. They didn't channel great animal spirits or fight alongside Alexander the Great, but they did last for a full 500 years, which is saying a lot. The Janissaries were the personal fighting force and bodyguards of the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. But what really makes them so interesting is that they weren't raised from birth to do battle. Instead, they were mostly made up of Christian slaves who were taken during the Crusades by the Ottoman Empire, who later converted to the national religion of Islam, albeit forced. This army of slaves was paid handsomely for their service to the Sultan and received what was considered a generous social standing. The Janissaries could handle weapons of steel like swords and halberds, but their preferred method of murder was bows and arrows, and they were some of the best in the world at the time. Speaking of time, the Janissaries were able to keep up with the ever-changing times, because when the bow and arrow were replaced with the first firearms in the 14th century, they took to them quickly and rained down continuous volley from afar, while leaving a haze of smoke and gunpowder across the field. Number 1. Spartan Hoplite the Spartan Hoplite, where to even begin with these ancient warriors? Another group made famous by Hollywood, the Hoplites will most likely go down as the greatest and most powerful military units of all time. They served in Sparta from the 4th to the 6th century BC, with their members training year-round in times of war and peace, with Hoplite being their main profession. They were paid to be the best, and the more battles you won, the bigger was your paycheck. 
The hoplites of Sparta were always armed with spears for both thrusting and throwing, and shields, which not only served as a line of defense while they attacked, but they were also used to bludgeon enemies. It's said that the edges of the hoplite shield were so sharp they could even be used to cut through flesh. But what made these fighting men so special is their training. They were trained to fight as one, forming solid walls with their shields, which were nearly impenetrable by bows and allowed them to attack with their spears. Their tactics were unrivaled, and their bravery was legendary. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular Top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.